But I'm going to bury my envelope in the garden yeah. in a safe because we wouldn't want to undercook this in terms of <laughs> security. <laughs> Grades, the big G. The big G in the house, the elephant in the room. The thing that everyone wants to talk about, but doesn't want to talk about, especially when it comes to the top end. Because that's really the place where it gets interesting. No one's asked about grades at the mid or the low really that much, are they? They, they are if it's like in your grade, but in terms of Controversy. Controversy. And that's what we're interested in. Controversy. But actually, the conflict. There's <laughs> the controversy. In, there probably is controversy in the, in the mid grades as well. That's the thing about grades. There's controversy across the range when you think about it. Don't ruin my argument <laughs> right from the outset, Pete. <laughs> like, we're literally in what minute one of this video. Yeah. And you've already wrecked my argument. Okay, so there's controversy across the whole grading scale. And I'm aware of it. You're aware of it. You guys are definitely aware of it. Why? When it comes down to it, all climbers and all people are different. And you get climbers of different abilities, different times in their career, uh, different fitnesses, different times in their fitness. Going and climbing these routes and having different experiences, having routes that fit their style, don't fit their style, fit their strengths. And that's where you get this whole splattering of grades around a grade. And that's where the controversy is, because one person will go, no, 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 this is really easy. This is so, this is totally fine for me. And then you get the other person going, this is totally desperate. And it fits this person, it doesn't fit this person. That's kind of where the controversy is. Yeah. But we solve that controversy by coming to a consensus and coming to a middle ground. Yeah, which is it was what a grade is, is it's a, uh, an amalgamation of a load of people's opinions on the difficulty of something, because ultimately a grade just represents a climb, but it's a way of denoting the difficulty of a climb. Because the real purest thing is to get on the climb and experience it. That's what tells you the real difficulty of the climb for any individual, but we come up with this thing, which is just a number and a letter. And then it becomes an average of everyone that inputs into that. So can we say, that a grade is more guaranteed, has less controversy, is more of a thing, a truth, if we have one million people climb that route and give their opinion versus one person climb it and give their opinion. An average is better, I would say. And yeah. that's what we get with one million people climbing it versus one person climbing it. So I would say that's a good thing. That's what we want. Lots of different opinions. Opinions on grades, I think is good to give your opinion of what you think it is. That opinion for most people, including me and you, is based off all the different parts that make up a climb, like how pumpy it is, how hard the individual boulder problems are. And then we kind of bolt all these sections together in our head. And then we come up with a sort of overarching description of that difficulty. And we kind of just do that in our heads, don't we? Like an intuitive sense. But interestingly, Nowadays, there's actually a tool, like an online tool, Darth Grader. <laughs> the old Darth. <laughs> Mr. Darth. <laughs> Mr. Darth, come in, please. Has stepped into <laughs> the 2023 grading arena. It's an online tool that's been developed and you can break down a route into manageable sections. So rather than thinking about the route as a whole and the difficulty of it because that can be difficult to manage when things are at the upper end of your level you can break it down into sections and you can go oh yeah i know that section and i know how i feel on that section that's an 8a and this is a, a v5 for example and then you can bolt those sections together with varying degrees of rest between and then you get a mathematical grade out the end of it can you tell us about what are the actual inputs that you can put into Darth Grader? Yeah, so on a basic level, you can put in what you think a section of the climb is, let's say uh, a root section, uh, and you can input what grade you think that is. Then you can also input um, sections of moves in boulder problems as well. 
So you can do that in V grades or font grades. So, you know, you might give it a, a font 8A or a V11. And then you can build these sections and in between them, you can build in rests. Does my 8A root go into my 8A boulder? Is there no rest in between it? Is there a bad rest? Is there a medium rest or good rest? So within the instructions of this online tool, it gives you a description of what a, a bad rest, a medium rest and a good rest is. Well, actually there's no rest. So no rest is quite an obvious description. You're going straight from one sequence into the next sequence, no rest. Bad rest, you're able to get a few shakes before blasting into the next section. A good rest is described as something where you can essentially fully recover. So that could be you're sat down on a ledge, you're in a massive, very comfortable knee bar. And then a medium rest can be anything in between bad and good. And it's a whole range. So medium is pretty broad. There's definitely subjectivity okay. in how you input it. And that's it, no more inputs. You can't put into it how steep the route is, the style of climbing on it, dynamic versus static, nothing else. No. Did you use Darth Grader for Crown Royale? To grade that, I, I initially had, I had an initial thought in my head. Like an intuitive one an, of an after you'd experienced the route. Yeah, an intuitive yeah. one that I kind of had from working it before I even did it. And I was comparing it to Recovery Drink. But then I also used the app afterwards to help guide me with whether this intuitive feeling was actually whether I was in that right range. And my initial thought of that route was, is this 8C plus or is this 9A? And I was right in the middle. Every time I put, put something in, I was either getting 8C plus or 9A and even split grade, it even gave me split grades. So even now, I'm actually still a bit unsure, but I knew I was in that range. Yeah. And that's also how I described that route when I made it public. I was like, I'm not sure it's in this range. You've climbed for nearly all of your life and you've got an intuitive way of grading when you climb a route, experience it, and you come up with a number. You also now have something which is there available online and you can put some numbers into it and it immediately spits something out. And they come up with a really similar number, which is interesting, isn't it? Because one has taken 25 plus years to get to the point of getting really accurate with your grading the other one is just put some data in and come with that. And of course, there are bits in it that require your own experience to come up with the individual sections, but it's still surprisingly accurate. So do you feel like this is something that climbers out there should be looking to use in addition to their own intuitive sense of grading? Or do you think it's a replacement for it? I don't think you can ever get something as a full replacement because for me, it's definitely like a feeling and an experience and comparing it to other things that you've done. But what I really liked about using the tool was it was a guide. My feelings and this mathematical equation are very similar. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, I know I'm in the right range here. I feel like it gets you in a few grades of where you need to be. Have you tried to break Darth Grader? In what sense? Like if you tried just putting in roots in it that you think are so weird and bizarre, for the grading sections that the thing just won't be able to deal with it. Have you tried anything like that in it? Yeah, to see yeah, I've it? tried putting other routes in. Yeah, and, yeah. What, and did it come out good? Yeah, I, think, I thought it came out like around the same kind of feelings that I've had for those routes, whether it's been first ascents or repeats that I've done. So we um, are being replaced by the robots. I don't think we can ever be replaced, but they're trying to, they're creeping in. Do you know what I'm imagining? Mm. Is I'm imagining that all of our mental energy and intelligence for rock climbing is just solely getting focused on climbing harding now, hard now. We outsource the grading. Yeah. We just don't do it. Don't put any energy into it. Just let Darth Grader do it. Do a new route, just put a little link to Darth Grader. There you go. Input. That's, what, that's the inputs, <laughs> that's the outputs. The thing we do have to remember about this is that the inputs that you're putting in are still subjective inputs. But we could have an online tool that made those. <laughs> how does that work? What makes up a route and how you work out whether something's French 8A and you work out whether something is a good rest or a best, bad rest. So you're like, how many shakes did you have of your left hand? <laughs> One, two, 
three. <laughs> Four. <laughs> yeah, and just input it. Type that in. Yeah. And it says, how did you feel? <laughs> kind of shit. <laughs> but I was unfit at the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. the time. I'd only, I'd only done two weeks of training beforehand. And it was my birthday the night before. And it comes out, it's like, uh-uh. Yeah. That's a good rest. You just felt rubbish. Yeah. And then you go into Darth Vader, open a new tab. Again, just straight back in. And it says, how many moves? How steep? How sustained? You put all those factors in. You didn't have to think about any of this. Just plug it plug in. Plug it in. Plug and go. Yeah. This could even be bad for the O-grading system, thinking about it. Nothing's bad for the O-grading system. I don't think anything can uh, compete. You know what we need? What? We need an O-grader. So it just like keeps updating when Adam yeah. does things. Do and, and he just inputs it. Do you think there's a template then... for that on Wix? <laughs> yeah, maybe. I'd be genuinely surprised if there isn't... We just need his logbook. Already. And there it is. That's the O-grader. In fact, I bet you there's someone watching right now who's really good at data mining. Yeah. And they can just export Adam's tick list from 8ANU and we can just pump it into our Wix template. And we have an O-grader. And we have an O-grader. <laughs> if they it's... do, you should give them one of these. Yeah, if somebody does that, we'll give you the full Adamondra package. So new, new T-shirt, gloves book if somebody pumps out a little o-grader for us yeah makes an o-grader tool you can send us a, an email at info at wideboys.com i think that's one of the best deals we've ever done i think it's a great deal i would love that we can speak to the t-shirt designer next edition it's just a little computer there on the side of the crag adam <laughs> climbing we've gone don't even need <laughs> us in the equation anymore no. just some laptops and the o-grader i'm seeing a good future climbing but anyway, all this comes back down to is... What does this come back down to? <laughs> what does it come down to? <laughs> <laughs> that was a tangent and a half. <laughs> yeah, it's a good question because I reckon there's a number of different reasons why people opt to not grade. I think sometimes it's just itself, just a unique way to stand out. I would say most people at the, at the sort of the top end in anything like being different they're not particularly into sort of following the crowd so i think that's one thing that some people do others are just don't want to face the controversy or the argument or the conflict that might arise from suggesting a really hard grade and they just want to concentrate on going climbing they can't be bothered with it and other times i think it's down to the fact that they don't feel like they have enough experience or opinion and they just want to wait for other people to go and try something yeah. and have three or four other people you know other pro climbers come and try the route give them an opinion and they might finally come back a year later and say oh i do think it's that and it settles in or they allow other people to find a consensus on it i certainly felt it like for the first time significantly grading century crack with it being like the hardest off width in the world and you're kind of putting your neck out there from that experience and then also talking to other pro climbers who do things at the limit is that it's mostly around the potential repercussion of a downgrade. I think that's actually the thing that people are most sensitive about on this whole thing, which is kind of silly because a downgrade is just a difference of opinion by the consensus which is reached after you do the thing. And it's literally that, a difference of opinion, not much more than that. It doesn't change the climbing. It doesn't change who you are as a climber. I suppose over time, it may be, if you keep doing it and your roots keep getting downgraded, whether it's at the top end or somewhere else, your reputation for accurate grading would probably go down. That's maybe the yeah. only long, true long-term repercussion, isn't it? And I don't know if I've seen that very often. You get reset a little bit when somebody comes along or two, three, four people come along and say, oh no, I actually think it's probably this grade mm. and it's a grade or half a grade lower. And you sort of get readjusted to it then. And then you're like, okay, yeah, well, I know how to then grade my next route. Yeah, it's interesting mm. that the climbing community want, when somebody does something, they want to see a big grade. Yeah. And then when it's done, they want, like you say, there's a bit of a wave of, oh, who's going to come along and downgrade it now? Yeah. I think we 
all love climbing, but we all love talking about climbing when we're not doing it. And what's interesting when you talk about climbing, it's big grades first, things are at the limit. That's a great topic to talk about. Another really good topic to talk about is a downgrade because there's egos in there, there's opinions. It's really subjective. Who's right, who's wrong? And I think that's what it is, is we just love chatting about climbing, mm. even when we're not doing it. Yep. You know, I, I like watching climbing when I'm not doing it. So it's just a, a good it's topic. Yeah, it's like yeah. a good theme. And a downgrade is a perfect one for that. So maybe in a way, Darth Grader could be really bad for climbing chat because it just defines it too much. And it takes away from the subjectivity and opinion. Talking about that, when do you think a downgrade or an upgrade as well, Mm. because things can go up, when do you think a downgrade and an upgrade can be given? Okay, really good question. So I think the reality of when something gets upgraded is when the most influential voices in climbing talk about this change in grade. So we talk about this upgrade to 9A+. If it comes from someone who's very, very, someone or somewhere like a a news website, and it's very, very influential, I think that has a really big impact on the speed and the kind of, I suppose, the gravity or the weighting of that upgrade potentially occurring. But if there's very little influence or media around that upgrade, then I think it can often take three, four, five repeats, all thinking that it's worth an upgrade to eventually reaching that upgrade. And, and, I think that and is it, it the same when somebody comes along and does your 9A and then uh, says, I think this is 8C plus? No, I don't, I don't think it is. I think there's a heavier weighting on the, the speed and the effect of the downgrade because people love controversy. They love the knockdown of the ego. They love the bit of conflict. And so people pay more attention to it being called out as a lower grade. I think the upgrade, people go, oh, right, okay, yeah, cool. Not a big deal. But the downgrade, oh, everyone's ready and jump. Yeah, It's almost like sometimes I wonder whether you see one person disagree with the first ascensionist and say one grade lower, and then it's declared as having been downgraded, which I think is ridiculous. The weight of the person who comes in second feels like a greater weight than the person who's been first when it's actually two, two opinions. Yeah. And I feel like the media has something to do with that. Oh, the media definitely has in, in the, something to answer on this. In yeah. the way that they, yeah. it's, it's a good headline for them, downgraded. But that's why I think nowadays it, it maybe is actually a little bit better from the grading perspective that all the well-known climbers around the world are kind of like their own little news channels in a way. So they're putting out their information and their opinion and they sit in those little isolated pools rather than having the news as being controlled by one or two really big online platforms, which I felt like it was back in 2000, 2005. Yeah. But it's really different nowadays. And I feel like overall the downgrading thing is actually in a, in a better position. I would say overall, I think it's a bad thing. Most of the situations I would say are avoiding a degree of discomfort and not saying it's okay to have a difference of opinion and say I don't agree or not have all the unknowns accounted for. And I feel like that's a slippery slope where we all just go down this route of going, oh, well, I don't know for sure. I don't want someone to tell me that this is undergraded, overgraded, or that someone else disagrees with me because it's just like, it's just life, isn't it? I also feel the, the, the same way in that I think in general, I don't think it's a good thing. We actually have less opinions. And opinions are good, and then we can actually get to the final grade quicker. Whereas if nobody gives an opinion, nobody really knows what it is. And then I always feel like the media or the public then step in, in in place of the climbers who've done the route. And I, I don't think that's a good thing. Somebody could say, this is the hardest route that I've climbed. The public and the media step in and basically grade it for them when it could be. They have no idea. Just give it get it out there. Just get it out there. Hope for the best. Hope for the best. Yeah. And deal with it when it's not. Exactly. And that's it. That's it. That's all we can do. That's all we can do.
Do you know what I might do? Yeah. The next time I do a good hard first ascent, I might get the public. <laughs> You're going to get the public to grade it for you. Yeah. <laughs> you wait for this. You wait for this. <laughs> I just, just said I don't think it's a good thing. Yeah. You're just going to go for it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to break it down. Just like lay it out. These boulder problems. This rest. You were just at a horizontal break. Lacing of micro cams. Just give you all the information. Then I'll let you grade it. I might even let you name it as well. The public, the public graded it this for me. Yeah, yeah. the public graded I'll just be really like upfront about the whole thing. I'll live with it for a month. I'm going to give it like 30 days to brew sponsorship deals off the back of it. Obama wants to have a word, get on the line with a little chat. <laughs> get invited to the White House. Get invited to the White House. MBE, maybe, knighthood, all this stuff. And then at the 30 day mark, whilst I've cashed in on everything, I... <laughs> Yeah. I'd then give my actual true opinion on it. Which of is, the grade. Which is higher or lower? Well, you just don't know. You don't know. Cameraman Pete <laughs> is looking so impressed <laughs> right now. <laughs> I feel like you're going to be helping me grade this next route. And it could turn out that this is really accurate. It could be the way, actually. But it could totally be a new format for grading. It could be a new format for grading. We came up with the O grades in 2023. Yeah, we have Darth Grader. Yeah, we have Darth Grader. Well, now we have the public grading system, PGS. Mm. I feel like there's a really big question. Would you trust someone like me to grade and name your next first descent? Well, I'd definitely let the public and you name the route, for sure. Because I think, uh, creatively, everyone's going to have such better ideas than me. I'm, like, run out of names now. I just can't think of anything. <laughs> just put something to do with cracks jamming. <laughs> but when it comes to grading, you've got to trust the wisdom of the crowd. Big pool of people. None of them have been on it. So is, this is the question. Yeah, it's, it's is, consistent. No, is a large data of people, none of which have been on it, better than one person that's been on it? Oh, for sure the public. Ah, so you're going for large data set. Yeah, yeah, no I, idea. I bet you the public's way better at grading my routes than I am. I might do this with the next route. Mm. In fact, I am going to do this with the next route. What are you going to give them? What, what, what fact, what, what I'm going to give them? <laughs> The boulder grades, I'm going to give them the root grade breakdowns. But they're just going to put that in Darth Grader and then it's not a public grade. Some of them will, because not everyone will know about Darth Grader. But we've just talked about it. My suggestion would be for you to write in a sealed envelope what you think the grade is. Put that in a safe, bury that safe in the garden. Leave it for a month, wait for all of the data to come in. Yes. Then dig the safe up, open yes. the safe, open yes. the envelope. And do a live reveal. Yes. Oh, that would be brilliant. That would be good. Would but be I'm going to bury my envelope in the garden yeah. in a safe. Yeah. Because we wouldn't want to undercook this in terms of <laughs> security. <laughs> no. That is such a good idea. I love it. Yeah. Um, YouTube I'm, live reveal. I'm turned the other way now. <laughs> <laughs> this is brilliant. Never. No, this happens all the time. I was about to say, never has such a shit concept <laughs> been spun around into something that seems so credible. I like the burying it in the garden so you can't retrieve it in a safe. <laughs> you focused on the burying in the garden. Yeah, I focused on that, getting it in an envelope, getting your grade, and then seeing if it's right. I want everybody to start doing that. Everybody should have a grade safe in their garden. This is the new way. Yeah. And everyone has to do it. Oh, I'm, I'm going to do this for the next route. Okay, so you're going to do it. Route, the next new route. I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm going to do it too. I'm going to think. Brilliant. And, and, and what I'm going to do is I'm not going to. Okay. Do I think we're on. Like the moon landings. That's fine. I mean, everyone can fake a garden burial. <laughs> Let's give it a workable example here. Should rubber crack gloves, specifically wide boys crack gloves, that make things easier for sure, should we be adjusting the grades of crack roots out there? Because they're now actually quite a bit easier with our gloves. How much easier? Is it, is it, the, is it a grade easier? Well, yeah. Potentially then. Shit. <laughs> Do 
know what the interesting thing was that I yeah. that I found recently? I went back on recovery drink, tried it in crack gloves. Oh, you did, yeah? Yeah, the, the throw move. I'd never done it in crack gloves before. Yeah. It was easier. I skipped, like, the weird flip and cross. Oh, right. Because I could stick in the jam. We were doing it with tape on. So I think when it can be bad, uh, rubber jammies, is when you can't fit your hand in. And I had that on Stranger Than Fiction recently. As much as the, the rubber jamming glove was better friction, I just couldn't get my hand in as far. So it was actually, it was actually a negative effect. We've made a product that's so good we have to adjust the grades down. Okay, so that is a conclusion yeah. that we probably do need to adjust the grading scale. Yes. You know what I also think would feel a reasonable amount easier with uh, rubber jammies mm. would be Sentry. Do you think so? I think if we went back and did it with rubber crack gloves on, mm. I think it would be a little bit easier. Yeah. I mean, the, the, in general... They're they really are, good. They're, they're better. They, yeah. I mean, there's more yeah. friction on them. So we talked about crack gloves. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing is... Knee pads. Did you feel like I wouldn't grasp the concept of what a knee pad was without handing me one? Okay, so I've got a wide boys knee pad here. I feel like with knee pads, this is one of those things which totally splits the climbing population. The believers and the non-believers. Those that have got behind the whole knee pad thing understand that they're getting a free grade. The non-believers are refusing to use their knee pads and are still sticking by the standing grades that exist on everything. And they're not accepting that at least half the population are getting an easier grade. What do you think should happen if somebody does a first ascent with knee pads on, let's say DNA, loads of like technical knee scums and knee bars. Yeah. 9C, one of the hardest routes in the world. Yeah. And then somebody comes along and does it with no knee pads. Do they then still just get 9C because... They just were stupid and decided not to do it without knee pads. Yeah, the first they, def they definitely get 9C. Yeah. But, but did they have a right to say, um, I think this is, I've climbed 9C plus now? No, definitely not. But that's what it felt like to me with no knee pads. Yeah, but that's not the way it works. Why? It? But why does it go the other way when you put knee pads on? Because everything in the grading scale has to be on the basis of all the resources, the tricks, the tips, the cheating that's available to the general population. Does that equate to bouldering mats on E grades? Yes. Okay, good. So what you're asking, is there cash for grades? Yeah. I'll go with the sensible answer here to start with, then you can pitch in. <laughs> I think it really depends on where the climber is in their career they might uh, already yeah. be like really quite far through the career uh, their sponsorships are already sorted out they don't have anything they've they've got a good backlog they've got a massive cv of things they've already done in the past kind of like don't, me they don't, <laughs> exactly like you, <laughs> you don't like need to prove anything sitting in their prime yeah nothing to prove yeah exactly everything to lose coasting 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 <laughs> But then I feel like at the other end of the scale, you might have those people coming through. They might have something to prove to themselves and to people and to their sponsors. I don't know. That's just a, a general thought. What do you think? I totally disagree. I do? Yeah. yeah what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> In all, all seriousness, I think that there is some of that going on. But I feel like is that the vast majority of professional climbers out there care way less about the grade than you think and even the people that care even less than that are actually the sponsors i didn't think i have ever had a grade debate like even the hint of anything being particularly important on grade no from sponsors it's a good point actually. in like 15 years of no. sponsorship mm. i've just never ever felt that which i think does actually show that they're really not that bothered it's yeah. just not a thing so which is why i don't think this whole manipulation of it for your career happens apart from just i don't know some odd cases here and there i think the grading of cracks is an interesting one because of the size variety and you know one person's paddle hand can be another person's hand jam and the difference between that is quite large mm -hmm. um with how 
difficult you are going to find it. I always grade them in comparison to the other routes that are around and those are graded for an average size hand person and we all grade everything to the to the grade of gold is hand jam, uh, red is paddle, green is ring lock and that's just how the grading system in that particular niche of climbing has evolved. But I do like the way that the Americans grade their cracks in that it's split across two grades and that let's if we take the third uh, 513 range then it's 513 minus 513 flat 513 plus and that actually equates to split grades 7c plus stroke 8a 8a stroke plus and aa plus stroke b gives a little bit more range for the range of hand sizes that are climbing it okay we agreed we we agreed on that one grades are definitely subjective definitely agree that grading is subjective yeah in what type of climbing in any type of climbing i don't know how we can do this how we can break cameraman Pete's question. Yes. We just link our boulder grade to our sport grade and see which is harder. So you know like eight font 8B plus equals 9A. Yeah. And we just go up the grading scale. Have we got further in, in sport or have we got further in bouldering? 8C is 9A plus. 9A plus. 8C plus. 9B. 9B. 9A. 9B, 9B plus. plus. So we're harder in sport. Yeah. Nice, sport, nice nice C. sports the hardest. Yes, definitely. So we should be updating the whole system. Yeah. So you've just heard me and Pete witter on about grades, agree on pretty much nothing. Did we agree on anything? No, we didn't agree on anything. Probably. But what you can agree on is Darth Grader is really useful. I think you can use it for sport climbing and track climbing. And I think you should have a go. Let us know how you find it. Poppity pop, pop, pop. You can go. Chick a chick, chick a chick, chick a chick, chick a chick, 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 chick